CFCN News with Barb Higgins and Daryl Jans. Good evening. Hub Oil was sentenced today for the explosion that killed two workers. The sentence surprises some people who say it doesn't fit the crime. Ryan Eckhart and Ryan Silver died when the Hub Oil recycling plant exploded six years ago. The victims' families are glad the case is finally over, but they are not satisfied with the punishment. Alyssa Carpenter reports. Nearly six years after a massive explosion and fire killed her son, and just one day after he would have turned 30, Ryan Silver's mother says justice has not been done. It's a lifetime. Never having Ryan. It's just about six years in court just to hear, oh, you know, they get 100000 for this, 100000 for that. The company was slapped with 400,000 in penalties, a $200,000 fine, 100,000 to be used for two bursaries at SAIT, one to be named for Ryan Silver, the other for Ryan Eckhard. The remaining 100,000 is placed in trust to be split between the four children who lost their fathers. The education trust was Hub's idea. In making his decision, the judge in the case said had the owners of Hub Oil not voluntarily put money in trust for the victim's children, he would have imposed a much higher penalty. At least one member of the Silver family says the penalty isn't high enough. They kissed up and they got what they wanted. Bobby Joe Eckhard Burnell, the widow of Ryan Eckhard, agrees the penalty should have been higher, but says at least she knows her frequent trips to court to relive that day are over. Definitely there's closure. It's been a hefty long toll and um, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with you know, the, the 100,000 getting split up, but you know, my kids are only seven right now, so it can grow. Um, I don't want to fight no more. Eckhard Burnell was remarried less than a week ago, but says Ryan lives on in her children. She says it's time for her family to get on with the lives they have ahead of them. Alyssa Carpenter, CFCN News. Hubble President Diane Grant is on vacation and did not attend court today. Hub's lawyer Earl Wilson declined comment. 13,000 workers at TELUS in BC and Alberta today hit the picket line. The union says members took job action because TELUS wants to throw money at workers but ignore job security. About 3,000 workers are striking in Calgary, but the company is assuring customers any service disruptions will be minor. Kevin Rich reports. Everybody has a chance to see what we're standing up for. TELUS calls it a strike. The union calls it a lockout. Can't be a little bit pregnant. You're either locked out or you're not. We have not locked out employees. Our doors are open. Our operations are open. This is the TWU that is taking the employees out. Almost 3,000 TELUS workers have walked off the job in Calgary in a labor dispute that dates back to the year 2000. And whether it's a strike or a lockout, the five-year contract battle threatens to cause delays in almost all of the phone company's operations. The job action comes on the eve of TELUS's plan to impose a new contract on all of its 13,000 union workers nationwide. Money is not the big issue. TELUS wants to start contracting out some services. The union the union says that puts job security at risk. A federal minister, Mr. Joe Fontana, offered the parties a special mediator in the last uh, uh, week or so here, and TELUS totally rejected that. But TELUS says the union doesn't seem to realize that the company must change with the market. Only 375 workers out of 13,000 would be affected, according to TELUS, and even they will be retrained. We're going from five contracts to one contract. We've been at the table over 200 times the last two years with a federal mediator or conciliator. Some union workers ignored the call to walk off the job, but neither side will say how many crossed the picket line. Kevin, as mentioned, tell us is promising customers won't feel much of an effect. Is that a realistic promise? Yeah, I'll tell you about that in a second. But, you know, I just received a copy of a report that relates to this story. Uh, the Canada Industrial Relations Board has just come down with a unanimous decision uh, ordering TELUS to bargain in good faith. Now, I've talked to the union about what this exactly means. They're not sure whether TELUS can be forced back to the bargaining table uh, through this, but it was a unanimous decision of the board uh, suggesting uh, that TELUS had not been bargaining in good faith and that they should do everything they can to get back to a collective agreement. Now, for your question, TELUS says that they're operating at about two-thirds capacity or about 65 percent. 
exactly what that means, we don't know. I mean, it's going to tell in the next few days or in the next few weeks. But we do know that in recent years, there have been many complaints that have come into our newsroom, the Better Business Bureaus and others about teleservice. Of late, though, teleservice has improved. Now they're challenged through this labor. They've got to satisfy three groups. They need a deal with the union. They need to uh, keep the loyalty of their customers. And they have to satisfy shareholders. Thanks, Kevin. Some drivers refuse to be slowed down by road construction. And that means some are cutting through neighborhoods. And they're in a hurry to get home. They don't have any patience for school zones or dogs or cats or people pulling away from the curb. Many residents are tired of dealing with people zipping down residential streets. It's so bad in some areas, some people we talked to said they might move. The city is trying to keep people from detouring through neighborhoods, but a traffic specialist says that's not the answer. Byron Miller wants to get people onto public transit and make neighborhoods more pedestrian friendly. We need to stop focusing so much on accommodating automobiles and look for alternatives uh, to move people around the city in a more efficient way. If you're having problems with cut-throughs in your neighborhood, call your community association. Calgary still hasn't hit the one million mark, but we're getting very close. The new census shows there's now a total of 956,000 people in Calgary. That's almost 23,000 more than last year. Mayor Dave Bronconnier says the growth is remarkable and it also creates a huge challenge. Bill McFarlane reports. <laughs> The 2005 census shows the annual influx of people to Calgary is continuing at a remarkable rate. An increase of 22,583 people in the last 12 months. Almost 14,000 of those represent migration from other parts of Canada. I came from Toronto, thank God, and I was relocated by IBM, so that's why I'm here, and I love it. Many immigrants see Calgary as a place of almost unlimited opportunity. Oh yeah, sure, there is a huge opportunities. If you're looking for some, something, you want to do something, you're going to find it. Many say that something is reasonably priced housing. New home construction is booming and 31 new homes are occupied almost every day. The communities of Evanston and Simons Valley are experiencing the fastest growth. Even parts of downtown Calgary are showing a modest population increase thanks in part to the construction of condominiums and apartment buildings. Which is of course part of the key strategies that we have sought which are having more and more people move into the downtown. But Bron Kanye says our current growth is not sustainable. You have all these people moving in, uh, new Calgarians that are looking for services and you cannot fund all of those services out of the property tax. The mayor says Calgarians pay 66% of their total tax dollar to Ottawa, 29% to Edmonton, and a scant 5% to the city of Calgary. Those tax dollars that are migrating to the provincial government, they need to be distributed on a more equitable basis with those communities like Calgary that are experiencing uh, such uh, record growth. If this growth continues, Calgary could reach a million people by 2007. Bill McFarland, CFCN News. The census also shows 71% of Calgarians own their own homes. The census reflects changes in Calgary between April 2004 and April of this year. Those big storm clouds northeast of the city last night caused a lot of damage. We have home video taken just south of the town of Rocky Fort. A wall of white cloud was loaded with hail it pounded the area for about half an hour, smashing vehicles, homes, and crops. We unfortunately don't have that video right now, so we are going to go and check with David. Well, hello, David. He's <laughs> getting the quick turnaround. Okay, David, what's going on outside? It's a little bit quieter tonight, isn't it? It is a little bit quieter. Let's uh, show, speaking of home pictures, let's show some stills shot by some of our viewers of the stormy weather last night. Uh, this is from Nancy Boone of Airdrie showing the dark clouds, the black cloud uh, over her community last night. Another shot here from Cody Gregory, an impressive cloud. Uh, just to the north of Strathmore. That's the one we saw from the city last night as we looked from the north and to the northeast. And here comes my favorite shot. 
It was taken uh, from Gem. Carmen Frentress took this one. You can see the spiral nature of the cloud. This is called a mesocyclone. And from these kinds of clouds, you quite often have tornadoes forming and strong tornadoes as well. I think they were very lucky in the community of Gem last night that a tornado did not occur. Uh, right now, the satellite shot showing a clearing sky throughout all of southern Alberta except, guess where, Calgary. Still mostly cloudy, although the cloud is starting to break up. 19 degrees is our temperature. Wind is from the southeast to 22. Tonight, 11 with a partly cloudy sky. Tomorrow is going to be a warm day. We'll get temperatures up into the high 20s. 27 degrees tomorrow. Some parts of the province could see 30 degrees as the temperatures will spike. There are showers in store for the weekend. And where is 30 for Calgary anyway? I'm not going to answer that question. It's just rhetorical at this point. We just haven't gotten there yet. All right, thank you very much, David. The mosquito that carries West Nile virus is now buzzing around Calgary. We want to clarify there isn't any sign of the virus at this point, just the bug that carries it. Because of the recent flooding, experts are worried there could be a lot more of these pests in our area this year, increasing the risk of disease. Najma Aksan reports. The mosquito species most likely to carry West Nile virus in Alberta is Culex tarsalis. In 2003, over 250 people were infected. Mosquitoes get the virus from animals, but so far this year, no cases have been found. We have zero cases reported this year in, for the entire province in birds, horses or humans. But the city is still worried that Calgary may become an exception. Recent rain and flooding have created increased habitat, according to entomologist Simon Wilkins. And if we have very, very hot weather, you know, obviously they'll develop faster and we'll see more and more of them. So it very much depends on what happens in Calgary's weather. This is prime time for the appearance of mosquitoes that can carry the West Nile virus. Last week, the city trapped about 20 of them and expects to find many more in the coming weeks. The question is how big the population will become. Numbers don't really tell us that much. You know, it just tells us that they're out there more than how many are going to be out there actually flying around. The uncertainty has the city asking the province for 300,000 extra dollars to launch a preventive campaign. 374,000 has already been spent on fighting mosquitoes this year. We believe that there is an, an increased risk given the population size, the density of Calgary overall, that we're saying the city is already spraying. We're dealing with some of this right now, but we would like to take it even one step further. We're monitoring for the disease. At this point, we've got no evidence of it, uh, so there's no, uh, you know, there's no plan at this point to reconsider funding. May says there's also no evidence spraying programs reduce the risk of contracting the virus. But if the level of threat changes in Calgary, more money could be available. For now, the best thing people can do is protect themselves with long sleeves and effective repellents and get rid of any standing water. Najma Yaksan, CFCN News. The province has given other Alberta municipalities a total of $1.25 million to fight this mosquito. Criminals are always looking for new way ways to steal from people. Leah Williams Doherty will tell us how two old scams are now being used to create one new scam. Londoners have new reason to be nervous about riding the transit system. We'll tell you how police were able to make quick arrests in connection with today's explosions.